Praise the Lord, you are tuning in to the media ministry of Apostle Barbara R. Thomas. This ministry is designed to bring forth revelation and encouragement and to enlighten your minds. Now listen as the woman of God brings you revelation from the word of God. God bless you again, everyone. This is Apostle Barbara R. Thomas coming to you once again with another show on today. I praise God for the victory on today. I thank God, hallelujah, for all that he is pouring out in this hour to you, the people of God. I want you to get excited on today, hallelujah, because we're getting ready to go back into part two, talking about Sybil, the prophetess. Listen, you need to just get involved in this teaching right now because we are really, really, really just pouring out what God has given us concerning this. And like I said on the last broadcast, it was so much uh, that we needed to do a part two because we didn't get into some things that we really needed to get into so that some of you could get a clearer, more better understanding of some other things that this spirit uh, attaches to. I thank God on today for Apostle Vanessa R. Brooks. Bless you. Hallelujah. Being with me on today. I thank God for her uh, and for her uh, just humbling herself and coming on the show with me with this controversial subject because I know it could cause some backlash and retaliation yes. uh, because of what was revealed and what is being revealed. But in the course of it, we we as men and women of God that are called on the front line, we understand that there are times that we're going to have to release information that's going to bring us sometime backlash and persecution. But if we are called, like God said we are called, we're never afraid that's to right. speak what the Lord gives us to speak and to enlighten the people with. So we're going to get back into uh, that study we were doing concerning Sybil, the prophetess. And I'm telling you, people of God, make sure. Now listen. Get those pens and papers ready because you want to take the information down uh, and you want to be able uh, to hear what we're saying on today and then go back so you can go back and really listen to it and everything and listen to the word of the Lord uh, that's being presented to you uh, and, and that you'll understand it. We thank God again for you, Apostle. I just thank God for you being uh, brave enough <laughs> <laughs> to come on uh, the program with me Amen. and to really, because I know like like myself, you have a passion I do. for wanting to see people know the truth yes. and to be set free. Mm -hmm. uh, so often we just embrace whatever we're hearing mm -hmm. in the body of Christ mm -hmm. without really researching or really going in depth into what we're hearing or what we're being taught. So it, this is just a season right now where the Lord is trying to open the eyes of the people. Yes. And I'm finding out so much, again, about error, that things that we were taught through our spiritual lineage that got us in trouble. And I can I can say myself, you know, as, as God began to reveal to me the teaching and things, uh, I've been studying it now for about three years. Mm -hmm. uh, God came to me about that word prophetess, and he yes. began to talk to me about it. And and I said, God, you know, I wanted to research, and then I, I wanted to find somebody that understood what I was talking about. Because when you try to um, approach this subject, um, many people was getting offended with me when I would ask them about it. They would get offended and make it seem like I was trying to come against the Lord and different things. But then when I began to research it and I began to really, really dig into it, I found out that, hey, we did some things and been speaking some things in error. So we want to get back into it. Uh, on the last broadcast, we talked about the origin of the name, where it came from, yes. uh, what it meant, uh, the the uh, the length of time that has been in existence, 
uh, and all that on the last broadcast. So we want to go into some more because there's so much more that we can reveal to you. And we want to be able to reveal that to you in this uh, broadcast now. So I'm going to turn it right now into the hands. Y'all know me, I'm the talk show host. So I'm going to be <laughs> asking the questions and interjecting at times. But I want you, uh, Apostle, to, to go ahead and get to some more uh uh, points that you need uh, so that you can uh, get a good understanding about this spirit. So we talked on the last broadcast, we talked about how this particular spirit uh, is rooted in a level of seduction. And we shared with you on the last broadcast that this spirit uh, is notorious for uh, the ability to seduce uh, not just uh, male counterparts, yes, but this spirit also is able to seduce female counterparts. And so when you study deeper into the uh, the historic the historicity of the civil uh, prophetesses, uh, they were literally connected to sex goddesses. Yes. Okay. And so uh, one of the things that we're seeing today, the body of Christ, is a lot of perversion yes. connected to the prophetic. Yes. Okay. Um, so we see uh, Women who are, again, extremely obsessed with the prophetic. We see women who are extreme, extremely obsessed with male prophets and female prophets. Yeah. We see female prophetesses who have an ability to uh, woo people, attract people. And a lot of times people don't realize that there's a, that there's a sexual innuendo right. that's being released. Now, I want to say this so that you don't get offended. Some of the prophetesses don't even realize what they're doing. Right. Okay. Right. And this is again why we're doing the teaching because we want to bring light to a very dark subject matter. Right. One of the things that Satan is doing is keeping us in the, the dark and, and in ignorance so that he can continue to manifest through our ignorance. Right. So I want to talk about, we've, we've talked about this before, Apostle Barbara, yes. the incubus and the succubus spirit. Yes. Okay. And so we have a lot of this going on in the body of Christ with ministers, with leaders, with prophets and prophetesses. Yes, yes. And a lot of you don't understand where it's coming from. So I want you to understand that there's a direct relationship between perversion and the prophetic. And yes. again, it's deep-seated. Oh my God, Very it's deep-seated deep perversion. These uh, civil prophets literally were uh, inducted, if you will, all right, right, into this this very tainted paganistic realm of the prophetic by these sex gods, right. and so there was there were orgies that they were participating in. Had to. They had to learn uh, certain sexual acts. We just grown, y'all, yeah. uh, and and so uh, these shrines that were situated in the cities, uh, that's what was going on in these shrines. Right. So it wasn't just about prophesying. There was also a strong seductive spirit. And there was demons and spirits being transported, right. all right, through the ministry of the prophesying. Why am I saying that? Because today in modern day terms, I'm not trying to tell you who to go to, who to go whatever conference you want to go to, whatever service you want to go to, right. whatever altar you want to stand at. I'm just teaching today. But what's happening is a lot of people are going to the altar, going to services, right. and the person is prophesying to you. Probably accurately. The right. symbol is accurate. Yes, she is. The accuracy is actually the way that the enemy used this gift. Yes. Because the accuracy is what's wowing people. Yes. The accuracy is what's making your mind subdued. The accuracy is what's giving that, that door, uh, what's opening that door to your soul. Because you're, you're, it makes you feel safe. Right. All right, and so while that prophecy is going forth, guess what's coming behind it? Seeds of perversion, right? Because what's happening is the accuracy of that prof the prophecy is hitting your soul. Yes. Okay, it's hitting your soulless realm. Right. And I'm trying not to be too graphic, but sex takes place. In the soulless realm. In the soulless realm. Okay. So there's a connection that goes on right there. Where the enemy is using the prophecy to seduce you. Right. So you leave the event now. 
and you've got this prophetic word that is entered into your soul. It was the right word. It was accurate. So it entered in. You go home and, you know, it could be immediately. It could be in a couple of days. But all of a sudden, you feel in some kind of way. Right. I said this on the conference call with Apostle Barbara when I was teaching on the incubus and stuck of the spirit. A lot of people end up having uh, crushes on their leader. Right. A lot of people end up having dreams, sexual dreams, sexual. about their leader. They're actually having sex with their leader in the dream. Yes. And you can't tell anybody because you're embarrassed. But oftentimes there's a transference that's taking place. Right. And that's why I try to tell leaders you need to be careful when you are prophesying to people because there's portals and channels and gates that are open. And if that person that's standing before you, if they're not healed in certain areas, there's a connection going to be made. Yes. Yes. So what Incubus and Succubus does, you can research it, it picks up on that open portal, right? Okay? And it finds that place in your soul that that word hit, and it latches on to that place. Right. And now perversion has crept in. Remember, you probably have something in your life that's been undealt with. Right. Maybe you were already dealing with molestation or rape, or maybe you were already dealing with depression. Maybe you already had a, a fetish, because for some people you don't understand that the, the word fetish is connected to the word idolatry. Right. All right. So maybe you already had some type of fetish. Maybe you were already uh, addicted to pornography, because this goes right. on in the church. Right. It could be something as simple, apostles, what Jesus said. You might just be lusting in your mind. Right. You may not have touched anybody, but Jesus said when you do it in your mind, you've already done it. You've already done it. You may be dealing with fornication. You may be dealing with adultery. Whatever it is, this spirit finds that place in you. And that prophetess, whether she realizes it or not, she is a vessel that was used because she's not a prophet of God. She thinks she is, though. Because she, nobody, she doesn't know any better. So she's being used by that realm, right? All right, to plant that seed, right? This is why I believe there is a lot of homosexuality manifesting in the body of Christ. Right. A lot of people don't even understand why am I attracted to the same sex? I never, you never had that problem before. Have you noticed that there are a lot of people who already have children? Yes, they've been married before. Yes, and now all of a sudden they feel tendencies towards the same sex. This is stuff that goes on in the realm of the spirit. And we need to understand that this the spirit world is very real. And when you study the civil prophetesses, all right, they were birthed out of the spirit world. Right. All right. Where a lot of ungodly soul ties were made through sex. Yes. Okay. So, we, again, we have to go into the realm of God and we have to break this stuff off. We have to break these demons off. We have to do some major repentance, but we have to also gut our souls out. Right. We have to detach from defiled prophetic voices today. Listen, people of God. At the end of the day, as much as I believe in the prophetic ministry, all right, there's an overindulgence in it. Yes, it is. All right, there's an overindulgence in it. And our churches have become severely contaminated. And so women of God in particular, you must understand from the time that we see creation, the woman has always been a target of the devil. Yes. She's always been a target of Satan. Okay. Why? Because she was the vessel that would bring forth the man child. Yes. And what the devil is trying to do, he really don't want you. His, 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 his beef is really with Jesus Christ. Right. So he's using you, the woman. God have mercy, Jesus. He's using the woman, all right, to sabotage and to taint the holiness of God's plan of salvation, which was right. to use a woman to bring forth the deliverer. Right. Remember Eve in the garden? Yes. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. You may not know this. Study. When she defied her instructions from God, she was operating in the spirit of Sybil. Okay. What did she do? She used her body and her sexuality to control her husband. Right. <laughs> right. Women, somebody got to tell you the truth. 
You have been given by God a gift. Our sexuality as women is a gift. Right. But it, it, in the hands of, a, of the wrong woman, it's also a curse, curse. Yes. to men. She used her sexuality to overpower her yes. husband, to cause him to dummy down, all right, to cause him to disobey God, and to cause him to listen to the voice of Satan. That's the kind of power that women have who refuse to go under the subjection of the Holy Ghost. I told you the last broadcast, it is a frenzy spirit that causes right. her to operate in a wild spirit. Okay, so uh, not just wild in terms of not submitting to leadership, but wild even with her body, yes. even with her femininity. She uses her femininity to not just control men, but to also control women. So women, I know you're going to get mad at me, but we have to be careful with some of the stuff that we are doing in the body of Christ with our femininity even. Right. Okay, um, because we're using our femininity as a weapon almost to make women almost as if they don't need a man yes. and almost controlling men with their bodies. All right. I'm not saying don't be pretty. Y'all, you, you know, obviously I'm not saying that. Hello. I am saying that we have to be very, very careful Absolutely. with our femininity yeah. because people sit in these chairs and they look at us as preachers, as prophetesses, and everybody not deliver. Right. And if we're coming across as seductive, if we're coming across as loose, if we're coming across as wild and out of control, it was wrong. It's yeah. gonna attract yeah. and it's gonna spread like a cancer. And it has in the body of Christ. And so we have people now who have spirit husbands. Now spirit wives. Let's get to that right there. Spirit husbands and spirit wives. And so marriages are crumbling because you got a husband. Yes. That you meet every night when you go to sleep. Yes. You got a wife when you go to sleep. So you and so a lot of you, I'm prophesying to somebody, I'm not sure who it is, but you, you're losing your your uh, your sexual appetite or desire for your spouse. You're actually fantasizing about females. This is too much for a TV. <laughs> You're Go fantasizing ahead. about females, about females in ministry. Yes. This is a spirit connected to the civil prophetess spirit. And I think it's greater than most of you realize. So you have multiple spouses in the spirit. Right. Now, the spirit, husband and wife, uh, because even in, uh, I'm dealing with, right now with some women that have went into covenants mm. with women where they said they have performed a ceremony mm. pledging themselves to be in covenant with these women they're not looking at this as this is a spiritual marriage mm -hmm. The way they presented it to them is this is a covenant, covenant agreement that we'll work together and be together. And they have pledged themselves to this person. Now, we have a lot of women right now that are dealing with the fact that they're saying that their female leader is coming to them. And some of them said they're literally seeing them. And can actually feel them like they're physically right. there. Mm -hmm. And they're having these encounters. Like you said, a lot of them are married. Mm -hmm. They don't know what's going on mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. But these are women that they say are the ones that speak words into their lives. Yeah. Uh, that they look up to as a person that they need to get their guidance and everything from and that's what that spirit symbol yes. is about yes it's about giving you guidance yes uh, uh controlling your movements mm -hmm. your actions mm -hmm. whatever you do that's what that spirit does yes. and so we're dealing right now with a lot of women in the body of christ that have had these spiritual marriages performed uh and they're trying to figure out i didn't i didn't marry Yes, you did, because you made a vow 
took an oath with this person that I'm going to be with you and I'm going to be this and nothing will be able to separate. Mm -hmm. Listen, you got to be careful with that. Yes, you do. Because especially if this is a person that said, don't hear nobody but me. Right. And this is what they're doing to them. You can't, you can't be involved. You can't hear no other prophecy, mm -hmm. no other nothing. Mm -hmm. It's just me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This right here has destroyed so many homes. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Just just destroyed. And these women are trying to figure out how did I get to this place to where I'm now in love with another woman when all my life I have desired mm -hmm. me. But it opened the door through the prophetic. Through the prophetic. And when you when you look at when you when you go look at uh Sybil online, just study it. The imagery of Sybil yeah, she's she's very overpowering. Did you notice yes, that? Yes. It's not that she was necessarily big in stature, but she's very overpowering in these images, and the other people that's around her are very small. very small. Yeah. All right. So one of the problems that I see in the prophetic is it's creating people who are very codependent. Yes. Yes. And that's not what the prophetic is about. No, it's not. Okay. You have to understand something. When I talked about spirit uh, spirit spouses, because Technically, according to the word of God, that husband serves as the protector, right. you know, the provider, uh, the one that really is, is, is taking care of the household, making, you know, making decisions. And so what the prophetic is doing today is, is making people dependent upon leadership right. to do things that a spouse would do. And so you're right. creating in your, in, your, in your imagination. And I talked about this earlier on the first broadcast. Very briefly, we talked about this spirit operates in, in imagination, right? Right. So that's why the Bible says you have to cast down vain imaginations. And so you're, in your imaginations, you see this, this leader, this, this prophetess as your spouse who needs to make decisions for me. And yes. so we as leaders have to be careful that people are not becoming dependent upon us right. and idolizing us and worshiping us. And in their own warped spirit or mindset, have made you be their lover, their lover, their spouse. It's very, 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 very dangerous because leadership, and this is why everybody shouldn't go into leadership. You know, you need to make sure that you that you're called because right. it's very, 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 very dangerous. Why? Because you have people who have been broken, who are hurting, and they will become codependent on you. Yes, they will. And, and they will, they can, you know, they can manipulate you to become something that you didn't sign up for. And so they end up very, very attached to you in the spirit. And so that's why you're showing up in their dreams. And they're showing up in your dreams. And so again, what has to happen is there has to be a place where you come to in the, in the, in the, in the, in the face of God and say, it's me. We're not here to judge anybody. We're here to let you know that it's dangerous and it's serious and it cannot continue because it's going to continue to spread. Right. All right. And we're going to end up with a with a with an outbreak of this. All right. It's going to become an epidemic it's if it hasn't already. It's, already it's, it's an epidemic in the body of Christ where there is a dysfunction that's taken place because women have lost the Romans teaches us. And, and, and even when you study Romans chapter one, right, you, you go back and study it. That's a manifestation right there of the civil spirit again, because the Bible said that the woman lost her natural affection for the man and the man lost his natural affection or his natural use for the woman. That's the spirit of civil right there, too, that says, I no longer want to be connected to the uh, in which the devil is doing that to break off creation. He wants to end uh, creation. All right, because again, that would that would uh, sabotage the plan of God. Right. All right. So there is this natural uh, uh, affection that we're supposed to have for the opposite sex that we don't see anymore. All right. And so a lot of that is connected to the civil spirit. I need you to go and do the research. Yes. It's a very domineering spirit. Very. Okay. As prophets of God, we're not supposed to be domineering and manly right. see some of them i told you in the last broadcast they were different sex and so some of those spirits manifested in in a very feminine soft way 
You don't look online, you don't see the pictures. Yes. And then others of them look very, very manly and very masculine. Praise the Lord. And so there are some prophetesses today who are, who are just manly and masculine and domineering and overbearing and controlling. Be careful. I'm going to get in trouble. We even have to be careful with the spiritual daughter right. and spiritual mother phenomenon. Right, right, right. Now, that's something God dealt with me real heavy on last year. Yes. Okay? You got to stop calling everybody your spiritual daughter. Spiritual you got to stop calling everybody your spiritual mother. Okay, uh, Bible teaches us, we have, Paul the Apostle said, there are not many. There's not many. We got a lot of instructors. There's not many. But there, again, that spirit that's loosed out there today that says, I need to connect to another female. I need to feel the affection and the nurturing of a mother. Of a mother. And if you're not careful, it gets tainted and it gets twisted and it gets sorted and it gets perverted. So we have to be careful with that because I told you the last broadcast, the you had the 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 older sibyls who yes. were like the matriarchs, and they were training up the younger handmaidens and teaching them to become sibyls. Right. Well, when I did the study and the research, oftentimes even in those situations, it became defiled, it crossed over. and tainted, and they crossed over. Yeah. And and this is a thing that I'm really dealing with. A lot of the women that God is not telling you to have no twenty spiritual mother. That's right. It, it, it you know we 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 all and but most of the time the women that have been rejected had bad relationships or have went through That's some right. kind of sexual abuse latch on like that. We talked about it. Oh, I think one time before about the spirit of the madam. Yes, is what that is, it, and it's connected to civil. To civil, uh, because uh, if you understand that spirit, it pimped out the young women to yes. uh, to gain the audience yeah. of whoever they're connected to. Uh, that spirit goes into deep realms, beastality, and everything. Uh, because, again, it's through a sexual contact mm -hmm. that they connect to these gods. Yes. So whatever it was, that's what they, they wanted to, to indulge in. To even become one, you had to have had sex with at least a thousand mm -hmm. persons to even be considered as one of the mm -hmm. major yes. of it. You had to had at least a thousand sexual encounters yeah. uh, to be able to be even considered as one of the high-ranking priests in that in that uh, in that way. This spirit has caught, and this is why you see it now, where you have all these people reaching. As soon as they get a prophetic word from one, this is my spiritual mother. Yes. A prophetic word from this, this is my spiritual mother. Yes. Uh, and, and it's rooted in the prophetic. It is. We still want you to understand that. It connection. is rooted in the prophetic. And if you study and look at the prophetic, even in this day and hour, the perversion that's attached to it, uh, people operating outside the will of God in sin, and all kind of iniquity, but yet they're precise yes. mm -hmm. in their word. Mm -hmm. But this is where we're getting messed up too, because we got to understand that the enemy can give you precise information. That's it's right. the character. Who are they connected to? What spirit is operating that we're trying to get you to understand to see? Those spiritual spouses is so heavy right now. If I can really tell you the marriages that are being torn asunder because some woman prophesied to a, a wife right. and now the wife is, is so locked into this woman mm -hmm. to whatever they say, is, is, is it goes. If she tells her you leave your husband and you have those women now that are prophesying to women to pull them out you got to understand because they're collecting what they're doing. Not only are they collecting your mind, they're collecting your soul. 
And this is what you need to understand. This is what they after. Because they have to give a sacrifice yes. to their God. Yes. So yes. they're sacrificing your, your soul. soul. Yes. They're sacrificing it. They're sacrificing you so that they can continue to have power and authority from these wicked spirits. So you got to understand, all of you that are hung up, on having to have all these spiritual mothers, you need deliverance. You need right now deliverance, right now prayer, because you don't need no 50 spiritual mothers in order for you to be who you're supposed to be. It is a spirit that is is so, so vast. In the, in the body of Christ. And people don't want to deal with it. Don't want to talk about it. They don't want to deal with the fact. Of what the intents of this spirit. Is all about. So we need to get a good understanding about it. Now the other part I was going to get into. Just for a few minutes. And I know this is I know this is going to really get me in trouble. Probably. Yeah. I'm going to need somebody to pray for me. Just quote me. But I'm going to say it. Um, those of you who are involved in sororities. The women of God that are involved in sororities. Um, you're going to have to be very, very careful, and I'm going to tell you why. Because when you study, uh, when you study Sybil, this spirit, remember, these were birthed from Greek gods and goddesses. Yeah. So those of you that are involved in fraternities and sororities, and most of those fraternities and sororities are uh, Greek fraternities and Greek sororities, you have to be very, very careful. Okay? The com I'm, in, I'm, I'm in trouble. The camaraderie that is, that is, uh, that is forced upon women uh, in order to even become initiated in, um, uh, is dangerous. Right. Okay, so you, you got to look at the origin and the etymology of stuff before you just say, I'm going to be a part of it. Be careful with, oh, God, help me, Lord. Be careful with Christian sororities. Yes. Because we think because we put Christian in front of it that it makes it okay. But again, anytime you're talking about forming allegiances, forming packs, uh, you know, one to another like that. And I'm not talking about godly covenants because I understand the principle right. of godly covenants and I understand that and I, I'm, I, I teach that. But I'm saying when you get into the habit of making personal covenants right. with each other, okay, again, a sexual connotation is released in the atmosphere. Right. A sexual connotation is released in, 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 the, in the spirit realm. Okay, and you're opening and channeling gateways again for perversion to come in. So be real, real, real careful with Greek uh, sororities, sororities as well, because this is where this spirit is birthed from, from the Greek gods and the Greek goddesses. Even our preaching, the way of the way some of us are preaching, we are also opening doors because when you preach, if you preach the Bible, and hopefully that's what you're preaching. If you don't exegete this text correctly, what you're doing is you are preaching and giving permission to these Greek gods to connect to our ministries. Right. Because again, as I said in the first broadcast, if you don't know how to study the Bible correctly, you'll read the Bible and you'll assume that what I see here is okay. For instance, we see the rivalry with uh, the women in the Old Testament. Who are those ladies in the Old Testament? Is it right Rachel? Rachel and Leah. And I mean, we we <laughs> we birthed conferences around that thing. You know what I'm saying? We 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 create ministries around those things as if it's okay to do that. As if it's okay for one person, one woman to overpower oh, another. Yeah. Yeah. As if it's a, we birthed conferences around the fact that Sarah threw out the bond woman. Right. Sarah was wrong for doing that. I'm going to get in more trouble. Sarah was really operating through a civil spirit when she asked, was it Hagar? Hagar. To have a baby. See, that's the spirit of civil right there. And then she wanted to turn around and throw her out because now she was feeling some kind of way. So we, we read these Bible stories, and if we don't preach them from the correct context, we're releasing these spirits into the women of God. And making them think that it's okay to manifest in those same characteristics. And again, this is what we see these spirits in operation in our churches. So this is the power of using that title prophetess. So for those that don't think it's that big of a deal, I beg to differ. 
all right? It is a huge deal. And again, we need you to break these spirits off of your life, off of your ministry, off of your relationships. We need you, for those in particular, that this thing is hitting you in your spirit today, we need you to lay this title at the altar, at the altar okay? And everything that's connected to it. Yes. All the perversion, the sorcery, the mind control, uh, the fatal attraction, because folks are getting killed. Glory to God. Mm. The diabolical plots. Yes. The sabotage against ministries. Ministries are literally being destroyed because of this spirit. People are innocently being affected by this spirit because of, again, ignorance. We need you to lay this at the altar today. This is serious. Yes. People of God. We're not saying that you can't be a prophet as a, as a woman of God. We're not saying that at all. Okay, no. I said in the last broadcast, the prophetic is not gender specific. Yes. We're actually saying the opposite. It's because you are attaching yes. your sex or your gender to this, to this office yes. that's causing the perversion. Yes. I'm going to say that yes. one more time. It's because you are attaching your gender to this office. That's what's perverting it. Yes. The office is clean by itself. Right. If you just operate in the office of the prophet, you'll operate from a clean realm. But because you are, are bringing attention to the fact yes. that you are a female, yes. because you're, you're angry over the fact that we don't call you prophetess, there's something in you that wants to highlight the fact that you are a female. Right. That right there, that's that spirit right there that is contaminating and perverting this office and creating all these problems. Because if you are a prophet, we're going to know it. That's right. If you are a prophet of God, of Yahweh, we're going to know it when we hear the sound. Yes. But because we keep adding our sexuality to this office, we are perverting it. And we are creating lust and sex in the body of Christ. We are, we are erupting perversion in the body of Christ because we keep attaching our, our sexuality gender. to this yes. mandate. And it's not gender specific. Yes. In Christ... We are neither male nor female. At home with your husband, you are female. But then, At home with your wife, you are man. But when you are operating in Christ Jesus, there is no, there is no gender. These are gifts of the Spirit of God. Yes. Of God. Yes. These are not gifts of genders. These are gifts of the Holy Spirit. But when you illuminate the fact that you are a test, all right, you're bringing in a ram of perversion. perversion. And somebody has to tell us the truth on today. The truth comes to set us free. Yes. It doesn't come to embarrass us. It doesn't come to shame us. We told you, we've used the term prophetess. We still use it because old habits are hard to break. Mm -hmm. This spirit is yes. so strong, it's hard to break this spirit off. And some of you gonna need to go into deep deliverance even after today. It's not going to drop tonight. It's a deep-rooted, strong yes. spirit. They taught us to say it. They yes. taught us. They demonstrated how we should prophesy. So they told us to be charismatic. All of that. They told us to be wild. All right? Because they told us that that was the anointing. So they told us to run around and scream and holler and right. do all these manifestations we didn't know that we was we was throwing out sexual spirits in the atmosphere. Oh my God! Yeah. Oh my God! Oh we God. didn't know that we was yeah. tainting the atmosphere yes. with all of that gyrating and all that performing. We didn't know. We didn't know. Oh, nah. But we know today, and even now, I'm saying, Lord, listen. I'm telling you today. I said to him this morning when I was studying. He. Look, the word come to convict me first. Yes. I said, Father, train my spirit. Settle me when I'm prophesying. Yes. Settle me because I don't want to fall privy to this. Yes. I want to I wanna stand before God and I want him to say, good, well, and good, well, and well done, that good and faithful servant. Yes. I don't want to be contaminated because of my ignorance. Yes. And so even I'm saying, Father, if you see anything on me, come on here. That is, that is the residue of something. Break it off my life. Come yes. on, somebody. You got to get humble at this hour. It doesn't matter who you, whether you're the prophet of, of a 5,000 member church or, or, or a five member church, God is calling for humility. Yes. And you're going to have to humble yourself and say, you was taught by somebody who didn't know no better. Yes. 
All right. And you was trained by somebody who didn't know no better. But today is the day that we can start afresh. Yeah. I don't want to stand before God's people, even though my heart might be in the right place. But if, if my spirit has been touched by this demon un, un, unaware, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to betray that. Yes. And I don't want to do that. So we're not trying to steal your femininity. We're not saying that you got to look like a, you know, old lady when you prophesy and minister. And we're not saying any of that. Don't lose your femininity. We want you to keep, keep it. that. But we don't want you looking seductive. At, because that's what it does. Uh, people, I hear it all the time. It's not in the dress. Yes, it is. Um, when you get ready to go before God's people, you need to be extra cautious about what you are advertising. Uh, people will judge you by how you present yourself. So we're we like she said, we're not trying to tell you not because if anybody like to look feminine, it's me. I so sure do. <laughs> I like to look real feminine, dainty, and everything. <laughs> so I'm not telling you not to look that. I'm saying don't look seductive, right. because this is what is turning the, the prophetic into such a circus right now, especially with the women. Mm -hmm. So many that I've seen on videos, on television, and I'm like, Lord, did they even consult you before they put that on? Because I know for a fact the Holy Ghost will convict you as to what to put on. I'm not telling you, like we said, I don't want you looking like you just come out the field. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you need to present yourself holy. And holiness does carry a dress code. I'm not saying you got to have your up to your neck covering all that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when you're showing certain body parts, they're drawn to that. They're not even drawn to what you're saying because they're too busy looking at your body. So you need to know that. This is the hour right now. We, we're trying to restructure the minds of the people. And just like she said, when the Lord dealt with me about that, about it, I was the first one to hit my knees, go to God fasting and praying. Because like she said, we were taught, we were taught that you had to do it this way yes. or it wasn't a prophecy. That you had to get all over excited, over exuberant mm -hmm. and everything uh, or you wouldn't be received. They taught us that, run all around while you're mm -hmm. prophesying and everything. But God has been selling my spirit so, so heavy yes. to where I, I, you know, calmly telling people what God is saying. And to still get the point across. And we find out we didn't have to do all that mm -hmm. to get people to hear that it's God talking. So we don't want you uh, caught up in that. We want to let you know. And we know that some of you might get a little disturbed because of what we're saying. But if we don't tell you the truth, then we're going to be held accountable. Because this is something that the Lord dealt with me about real heavy. About that word prophetess. Yes. Something about it from the time even when we said it. If you were walking in the spirit, it, it kind of, you had a check. You did. But you just didn't know what it well, was that's right. until the Lord really began to impact. And and even as I began to tell the people we were going to do this, I had several people say that the Lord was dealing with them about it. But because it was part of the Christian society yes. to use it, they went on and said it. We not realizing that we said it and open up the month experience on people by even putting a license, Jesus. affirming them, laying hands on them in that spirit. And we had to go to God and ask for forgiveness. I know I asked for those that in my ignorance, and that's the word the Lord gave me not too long ago. He said, pray. That my people will not be ignorant any longer. He said the lack of knowledge is what's destroying them. Yes. So we come to give you knowledge on the day. Because this spirit is so 
widespread. I'm telling you, you see it even in the church. Watch people, even when they're getting prophecies. I've seen people go through motions as if they were having sex right then yes. with something. I've seen it happen. Yes. Folks fall out on the floor and their bodies go to moving. Mm -hmm. Folks fall out on the floor and they go to slithering like snakes mm -hmm. behind a prophetic word. Mm -hmm. It's because of the spirit that was connected to that word is into that person that was released in their lives and they couldn't help themselves. They begin to manifest what was in operation, but we begin to look at it as something else that they were receiving the word of the Lord rather than seeing that this was a demonic manifestation of an impartation because of a prophetic word that was released in the person's life. Some of you need to understand it's going to take great deliverance to get you free yes it's going to take because your mind got to get delivered first for one thing right. to even know that you're walking in error and so we want to do that um uh, what i'm seeing also apostle is a lot of the women uh prophetess that are now engaging in It's not even a marriage. Well, what they're doing is for a um, pretense. I think we were talking about it before, and I was talking about it with uh, the woman of God, where people are getting married under these stars mm. and not having a ceremony. They're doing they're doing the star the star thing, um, you know, because I don't want a real commitment. I just want to be able to have this. And they're doing that because of this spirit. Because yes. it has to have sex. It has to have sex. Yes. It is a must that it has sex. So we got the people marrying under the stars now. And they're saying we're married in the spirit and that's all right. And this is what this spirit is about. Marrying in the spirit. So we have a lot of that going on in the body of Christ right now where we thinking people are married. And I can tell you, a couple of them feel fooled me, but I got the scope on it now. Mm -hmm. And so I know that they're not really married. And so, but I, this spirit comes to do this, to keep the people, uh, because it has to have sex right. to, to stay in good standards with its God. Because like you said before, that it's... Um, they, it's about a sacrifice, and yes. so oftentimes um, the sacrifice has to be made through the exchange of bodily fluids. fluids. Because what it's trying to do is engraft in, in more and create into the into this in, into the uh, into the fold. And so if it if if there's an exchange there, then uh, what's in that person is now in you. you right. And so you you wake up. With the same mindset from out of nowhere, yes. so that's that's why the sexual part is 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 a must because there needs to be some type of exchange Shame. of bodily, of bodily fluids. fluids. Yes, to to uh, to if you will impregnate the soul of of the other individual, oh. and I don't mean impregnate in terms of a baby, but sometimes that happens yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. But they don't want a baby. They don't want a baby, right? But to impregnate the soul of the individual to be able to en engraft them into the mindset of the of the civil um, spirit. And so that's why we see an increase of it. Yeah. And one of the last things I was going to say, I know we all do it, we all have gatherings, but I just want to read this to you from the history books about the Sibyls. They were prophetic priests. Write this down. Write this down now. They were, they were prophetic priests, priestesses, uttering predictions in a static frenzy. We talked about that. Static frenzy. They held gatherings. Yes. They ha they held gatherings at well-known divination centers. So again, at these gatherings, at these prophetic gatherings, they were activating other sibyls. Yes. They were having orgies. Yes. They were drinking. I know I'm in trouble now. They were partying. The wine. And they were prophesying all night. And this is what they're doing now. 
I want to say this one other thing, and I and I just I just need three people to pray for me because I I know, and I do Facebook lives too, so don't don't stone me today. But all of us have to be careful. Yes. When I studied Sybil and I saw pictures, here's what she does. This is what she did. Go look online, you'll find it. The same picture. I have it in here, but I, I probably can't find it. She sits. She would sit on a chair. Remember, I told you that they would come in and they would sign up for whoever mm -hmm. they wanted to see. She sits on this chair, and for some reason, because their spirit was so strong, there was a crack in the earth, because they're earth gods, yes, earth priests. A fume would come up from the earth. Yes. This is why y'all need to be careful with all these fog machines. Yes, yes. This fume comes up from the earth, and it intoxicates the people that, that they're prophesying to. But the women would sit in these chairs all day. All day. And prophesy to men and women to entice and seduce them so that these spirits of sexual, these sexual spirits would manifest. So I want us to be careful with how we're going on Facebook Live, prophesying all day. Yes, all day. And you got hundreds of people sitting under your, and I, there are some true prophets. I'm not talking to the true prophets. But if you are not 100% sure that you are a true prophet of Jesus Christ, you got to be careful. Yes. Because there's an influencing spirit that's connected to you. Because a real prophet, people ain't signing up like that. No. So you got to be careful because they would sit at the, at, the, at the shrines. All day. All day. And they would prophesy all day. All day. To these people. All day. To intoxicate their spirit. Something is wrong today. And social media, which we I hope we do another teaching on that, is a demon all by itself. Yes. We're gonna get that. Too. When you study the book of Isaiah, there's a there's a spirit called Medi. Medi. M E D E. Yes. Which is where we draw social media from. Yes. So social media is a whole nother problem because social media is, has taken the place of these shrines yes. that they used to sit at. So now Facebook has become a shrine that anybody can just log on and say, I got a prophetic mm -hmm. word and entice people all day, all day long. Money was also sacrificed at these shrines. Yes. So money and sex, money and sex was sacrificed all that's day. Right. And that's where we get pay this pass. whole pay for pay for prophecy from. Yes. Because at these shrines, these women would collect money for, a prophecy. for their prophecy. So, so y'all be careful. I'm going to get in trouble. If the Holy Ghost say do it, obey the Holy Ghost. But if you just doing it by, by habit, be careful popping your PayPal. Yes. Every time you go to do a Facebook Live video. Yes. Be careful. Because that again... Is a spirit of Sybil. And I want to get that again so y'all can understand. Again, this spirit has been here 6,000 6, years. So it is still manifesting. And every it's, generation of us is going to find a it, way to connect yes. to whatever. Every new age, every new generation. The devil is smart, y'all. Don't get it twisted. He's cunning. So every generation that we, every new generation, it's going to find the God of that age, and it's it, and it's going to pull us right into it. Yeah. This so God the God of this age yeah. is media. It is. It's media. It's media. 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 And so we got to be careful. Now in twenty years, it's going to be something new, yeah. and whatever it is, Hol they, hologram. Yeah. Hologram. Yeah. So whatever new, whatever new thing that 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 the world comes up with. These spirits are going are going to connect, and you know I believe in witty inventions, but you got to be careful with that too. I believe in witty inventions. Don't get me wrong, but you got to be careful because according to Romans one, some of these inventions have come to undermine the plan of God. Yeah, so you have to be careful. So you have to be careful. Um, talking about them sitting all day prophesying. And if you really look at the picture, they sat in these, some of these chairs that you see in these places. High chairs. These high chairs in these high positions where they're up yes, on a platform. Yes, like, this is what they sat in. 
and prophesied all, all day. day. All day long. I told somebody, God is not telling you to release a word all day all long day. like that. You true prophets, people don't really flock to them like that. Right. Uh, we know that from some of our gatherings. <laughs> yes, we do. We know we that from some of our gatherings that they're not coming because they know they're going to get truth and they know that they're going to uh, be challenged in those places where they err at. Right. But you, the people of God, got to get an understanding now. <laughs> this is the hour right now where the Lord is stretching us beyond the, the norm in the body of Christ where we can begin now to begin to see the things that we have learned that were not of God, that we need to just go in and uproot those things. We're not trying to hurt anybody, but we are going to try to help you. And I found out that if people won't help, they'll listen to the, the counsel of the godly. Yes. Not the ungodly. They'll listen to the counsel of the godly that will tell them what is right, what is wrong. If we didn't love the people, we wouldn't even share this type of information right. with you. We'll continue to let you. But when you get that, and when she made the statement about you always connecting your your your, your PayPal or uh, Square Cash, whatever they be using, uh, when you be connecting that with everything you say, civil, 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 civil was here, and I'm telling you. Even the men, yes. I'm telling you, of influence, the governmental officials, all of them went to these spirits yes, and got advice as to how the, the country is supposed to be ran and everything. And so even in that, we have to be careful because sometimes the man up front, but civil is operating in the back. And you got to remember that it's a Jezebel and also type of spirit. So when he talks about Jezebel sitting as a prophetess, right, right, right. And, and if you read about it, he talks about her offering the idols, making them eat the food of idols and everything. That's all connected to civil. Yes. That's the original Jezebel. Jezebel, when she came along, she was just operating in a civil spirit. That's all she was operating in. But the original civil, mm -hmm. Jezebel was just an outspring of who she is. So y'all, so we, we. The other thing, this is the last thing I was going to say, is the Lord told me to also speak about this, is we have to beware of those who are prophesying death and curses yes into our spirit i told you on the last broadcast that this spirit of civil uh is is birthed from the caves yeah the the, the underground yes hades under the earth yes some of y'all don't know but there is life under the earth it most certainly is i mean real i mean there are spirits that live we're going to talk about every day under the earth yeah and so uh Hades, when you look in the Bible, sometimes hell is referred to as Hades. Hades is actually life on the earth. earth. Yes. And, and prophetesses who are always talking about death. I, I've, I've seen prophetesses who release death curses over people. If you right. leave my ministry, you're going to die. Yes. If you don't do this, you're going to die. Be careful. That is the civil spirit. Yes. I'm going to get in more trouble. Prophetesses who are releasing curses over people. You need to be 150% careful with that. Rarely is God authorizing you to release a curse over somebody's life, especially if you're just mad because they did something to you. Right. Right. And we see that a lot too. Yes. When somebody yes. does something to us, we curse them to death. Or we say we release a curse over them. This is what the civil prophetesses did. They released curses and, and death uh, hexes over people who wouldn't receive their prophetic release, who wouldn't receive the word of God, or who would not who would not satiate their sexual appetite. They begin to release curses over them. So we need to be real careful about speaking curses over people's lives because this is a manifestation yes. of this same civil spirit. So we thank God on today. We're just elated that you tuned in to another one of the broadcasts and we're thanking God 
that he is enlightening you and opening up your understanding concerning those things that you need understanding of. I pray that each and every one of you heard the wisdom that came out of our mouths yes, on today God. and that you take the information and graft it into your life. But most of all, that you see the error and get the uh, spiritual help you need yes. for your deliverance to come. God bless you until the next time. Be encouraged. Yes. Know that we're praying for you. Yes. And Sybil, Sybil, you got to go. <laughs> yes, sir. You have just finished listening to the media ministry of Apostle Barbara R. Thomas. You may write her at Apostle Barbara R. Thomas, P.O. Box 13291, Durham, North Carolina, 27709. Thank you for supporting the ministry.